Hey everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes, and tonight we should be getting the reveal of the next legendary hero in the game along with all of the units that will be featured alongside them on their own legendary hero banner. Now really at this point I feel like it could be anybody. They did deliver on the last legendary hero, Alm, which was a much requested legendary hero. Uh, Naga was predictable just because of that leak and information that they had already provided. So I guess this time around I'm just going to guess two random candidates that I think could potentially and will probably get a legendary hero at some point in the future if not tonight. Uh, let's say legendary male Corin. I suspect we will most likely be getting one of those at some point and maybe legendary Makaya. So those are my two guesses for tonight. They are pulled straight out of my ass so please don't hold me to them. But we will see together in just a few short moments who the legendary hero actually is. So let's go right into the trailer. All right, I am not looking, not looking at who the hero is. It's going to be a surprise. New legendary hero joins the battle, and it is going to be... Wait, what? Elliewood? Blazing Knight Elliewood. Okay. All right, that's fine, I guess. Going to be a... Uh, Ardent Durandal is going to be his weapon. So he's on horseback. Hopefully he's... Uh... Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that little galloping animation. Okay, they're gonna show up a pair-up attack with his boy Hector here. And Hector is uh, <laughs> cheering him on. Alright. So he's gonna be a wind hero. He's gonna be red. Uh, coupled with or paired with Durandal as well as uh, Ephraim, Robin, Ryoma. Okay. We've got Lucina, uh, Freed, Sakura. Veronica was there. Hinoka, Getting the hot springs in there. Selkie as well. Yoon. Or Yune. Okay. Alright. Not bad. Alright, so starting on the 28th and lasting until the 5th of July. So we have about a week as usual for this banner. And we're getting Elliewood. So finally, Elliewood getting his uh, his tribute, his fair tribute, his, his pals Lin and Hector... Each have their own legendary version, and Ellie would, at many would argue, has been long overdue. So we finally have him. Legendary Ellie Wood, legendary hero Ellie Wood, uh, is in the game, and that's exciting. It's a great thing, and I'm kind of excited to see what his ardent Durandal does, because we've gotten a whole host of different Durandals in the game, and, and hopefully this one really kind of bucks the trend, does something pretty interesting. So let's uh, take a step back, uh, rewatch the trailer, and take a look at Ellie Wood's skills. Uh, and then at the end of the video, we'll go ahead and kind of evaluate the different colors on this banner to decide whether or not it's going to be worth pulling. So let's start at the beginning and replay it. Check Elliewood out again in action. So not the most surprising or, uh, yeah, not the most surprising pick. Okay. Wada Sachiko doing an amazing job on the art as usual. All right, so let's pause here, take a quick look at Elliewood's skills. So Ardent Durandal is his weapon, Might 16, range 1, of course, as a sword. Grants attack plus 3, never a bad thing to see. Uh, at start of turn, grants bonus doubler to ally with the highest attack. Really? Okay. All right, so bonus doubler obviously was the skill that came... Uh, with his son, I mean, when his son's legendary version came out, Legendary Roy, he came and debuted with Bonus Doubler in the A slot, which was new for us all. And it looks like Elliewood is getting that innately on his weapon. So the apple does not fall too far from the tree, I suppose. Bonus Doubler, uh, as many of you know, grants bonus to attack speed defense res during combat equal to the current bonus on each unit stats for one turn. And it al calculates each of those independently. So you can kind of think of it a little bit like a Blade Tome. Not really, because Blade Tomes stack everything onto the attack stat naturally. Uh, but Blade, um, but Bonus Doubler, essentially any activated buffs, so uh, rallies, hones, fortifies, things of that nature, uh, will end up getting doubled on that stat, which is extremely good. You'll notice it does say to the ally with the highest attack on the, on the, uh, on the team, which doesn't rule himself out, so he could grant himself the Bonus Doubler. Uh, it's just whoever has the highest attack on the team. And I, maybe I'm, you know, stretching, maybe I'm taking a leap here, but by that token, I may, I, I feel like Elliewood is going to have some pretty monstrous attack. I feel like the intent is for him to get bonus Delver on himself in most cases, but, but who knows? I mean, 
that also means that he's just going to be a fantastic support unit at the same time. Uh, just having that bonus doubler on uh, any unit, uh, any unit map-wide. It's a map-wide buff, and that's pretty ridiculous. Now, what we're seeing more and more often in something like Aether Raids is people putting all of their eggs in one basket. So having one very, very extremely tanky enemy phase unit with self-sustain that gets passive buffs from all of the allies around them, and uh, their allies around them also have map-wide debuffs. Uh, we're seeing that, I've seen that pretty commonly in Tier 21 Aether Raids and above. Uh, it, it, it's a pretty effective strategy, especially if you want to, uh, you know, kind of coast uh, in your current tier. And this, this is just one additional way that you can do that. So it also comes with Rally, Speed, Res, Plus. Uh, rally skills, again, we're, dual rallies, we're seeing them more and more in Aether Raids for AI shenanigans. Uh, and then, of course, there is the arena scoring ability. Of course, he's cavalry. Cavalry innately have lower BST. So generally speaking, for arena offense, it's not really going to be a viable candidate uh, for at least the higher rungs of arena. But again, the rally skills do have an, a place, certainly on Aether Raid defense. So Deathblow 4, certainly a premium A slot skill, grants attack plus 8 when the unit initiates combat. Chill attack 3 on the B slot. Chill skills are always excellent on the B slot. Uh, I feel like this is probably going to get swapped out pretty hard based upon his kit. Chill attack's great, but chill attack is also the only chill skill available as a seal. So in a lot of instances, people will opt to run it as a seal, and you only need one chill skill on a team. So, or one chill skill for a specific stat on a team. Okay, so C slot, Visions of Arcadia. Okay, at start of turn, if dragon or beast ally is deployed. I'm not sure what deployed means. I mean, the, the obvious answer would be that they're just on the team, but it's kind of a weird way to say that because I feel like they could, you know, just say that there are any beast or dragon allies around, um, or anywhere on the map for that matter. Deployed makes it sound like, uh, when they're transforming, like, like there's a, a transformation activation, something to that effect, um, but... It doesn't seem like that would be the case because obviously dragons don't transform on the map. So I'm guessing it just means that they're paired or on the same team as Ellie would. Uh, so as long as that condition is met, it grants attack defense plus six to ally with the highest attack for one turn. So basically Ellie would is going to be doing a whole lot of buffing for to the unit with the highest attack on the team. Both going to be granting them bonus doubler, which is in inherently strong as it is. Uh, and then at the start of the turn is going to be granting them attack defense plus six. So what that means is that bonus doubler is going to automatically take effect. So really what he's giving is attack defense plus 12. Assuming that that unit isn't panic ployed or that unit isn't debuffed in some other way. Uh, so that's honestly, I mean, that's pretty great. I always like it when you have these unique conditions and the unit also meets those conditions. We're seeing that more and more often with legendary heroes uh, as well as... Uh, mythic heroes they're creating these sort of very unique situations in which there are these buffs or that something dynamic happens and but the unit themselves is able to fulfill that condition uh some easier than others but usually they're able to to fulfill it um and elliewood is no exception um so his kit is really centered around buffing uh a central unit and providing that unit with a lot of support um, which is pretty good. I mean, that's that that that's pretty good stuff here. And and his weapon again, if if you stack everything on Elliewood himself, um, you know, <laughs> Elliewood is going to be a monster in terms of his own attack. I mean, he's going to be self buffing essentially. But nonetheless, nothing mind blowing here. But definitely capitalizing on the aspect of having a singular unit on a team that kind of soaks up all of the buffs uh, from his allies. And again. I think that is kind of a trend that is a way that people have been making teams, again, in Aether Raids to kind of just push everything on one unit that's able to sufficiently tank and kill on enemy phase. So let's keep going here. Take another look. Yep. Galloping forward. That's pretty cool. I like the little flourish he does at the end. And of course, he's paired up with his buddy, Hector. The attacking art's pretty neat. I like it. I do like it. And Hector's cheering back there. Okay. So, we've got Gunther. I haven't seen her for a good bit. Get Legendary Ephraim as well. Legendary Robin. Legendary Ryoma. Legendary Lucina. Veronica. Freed. Sakura. Hinoka. Selkie. Yoon. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, just to be sure that that's not... Um, 
that's New Year's Freed. That is not Legendary Freed. So let's take a look. Let's let's break down these colors, shall we? So first up, we've got, of course, red, because Elliewood is going to be the marquee character for this banner. It's going to have Elliewood on it. It's also going to have Freed, and it's also going to have Ryoma. So it's going to have two Legendary Heroes and uh, one half Legendary Hero, because Freed is technically has a Legendary Hero form, just not, just not right now. Um... Pretty good. I'm pretty good overall. Obviously, Elliewood is going to be a prime candidate to pull for. Ryoma remains one of the strongest red flyers in the game. Absolutely. One of the strongest red units in the game. I mean, his stat line is ridiculous. Um, he comes with a very unique special that allows him to just dish out tons of damage with his special. So Ryoma is awesome to pull for. Elliewood is awesome to pull for. Uh, Freed is pretty great too. Uh, he comes with some good stuff. I can't remember exactly what premium skills he comes uh, he comes with. And let's take a look at blue next. So blue, we have Ephraim, Legendary Ephraim, Legendary Lucina, and third would be Selkie. So that is actually a pretty stacked color. Again, two Legendary Heroes. I, eventually, we're going to get a Legendary Hero banner that just has Legendary Heroes. Uh, so Legendary Ephraim is, remains strong. He's a very strong candidate, especially in Aether Raid defense. Um, just can do some pretty pretty uh, meaningful shenanigans with forcing the double, activating Gale Force, all that good stuff. Legendary Lucina, you always kind of have to dance around. She's always very tricky with that future vision, uh, and I still don't have her, so it would be wonderful to get her. And then Selkie. Selkie is actually pretty phenomenal as well. Next up, let's take a look at green. So we have Gunthra uh, as well as Hinoka, right? Yeah, so I think it's Gunthra, Hinoka, and Yoon are the three greens. Gunther, one of the very first legendary heroes in the game, uh, still powerful to this day, I would say. She still has a lot of unique things going for her, and she pairs extremely well with her siblings as well. So uh, she's worth pulling for. If you don't have her, it's always good to get a new legendary hero. Hot Springs Hinoka definitely has a very unique dagger as well. And then you have, and she's a flying uh, flying dagger unit, which isn't all that common, certainly. Yoon, Yune, she has a pretty unique debuffing, uh, debuffing effect. And she's very effective in Aether Raid defense. Again, on certain seasons, she will actually reduce the amount of uh, lift loss. So that's always actually useful to have. Uh, for green, uh, we have a legendary hero and a mythic hero on it, as well as Hinoka and a bath towel. And then for colorless, we've got Grima. So we've got female Robin, as well as Veronica, Brave Veronica, and a Flying Sakura, Hot Spring Sakura. Flying Sakura has uh, some unique buffing abilities, map-wide buffing abilities, with respect to uh, creating a special cooldown effect. So that's pretty unique. I mean, it's it's relatively rare, and it's something that you definitely don't see uh, all that often or affected on uh, non-infantry units. Infantry units kind of have all of the, the special activation toys that are out there for the most part. Um, some of the more, the trickier ones are the ones that kind of require some more um, high investment builds. Uh, Grima, female Robin, uh, is one of those units that really shines with merges um, and high merges because she has sort of a balanced stat line, uh, not really being exceptional in any of those stat lines, but with merges she's able to kind of push out of her uh, comfort zone and excel. Uh, and so, you know, she's definitely worth going for if she wants to, if you want to make her a merge project, her being a legendary hero in general makes her inherently valuable. Uh, Brave Veronica is amazing. Uh, she always is amazing and she will be amazing for the foreseeable future. So uh, she's absolutely worth getting. If you don't already have her, getting merges for her is never a bad idea. Although I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a high, high priority. Generally speaking, what you're going to see her in is, again, Aether Raids, uh, I would say. And then for certain challenges, she's always useful in PvE content as well. So I might be a little biased here, but I, I feel like blue and red are really kind of the standouts here as far as selection are concerned. Each of them both have two legendary heroes, which is never a bad thing. If you're pulling on a legendary hero banner, uh, this is the only opportunity to get them. Uh, and then the third unit to round it out is actually extremely powerful. You have uh, New Year's Freed as well as Selkie. So uh, both of those, if you don't have them, I don't have either of them actually, uh, would be fantastic to get and could be a valuable asset. They also come with great fodder. So uh, so as far as ranking the colors, again, I would say that blue and red are, are kind of up there. And then below them, I would put colorless and green kind of on the same on the same level as well. If not green, maybe being a little bit higher, um, only because green has a, leg a legendary and a mythic hero on it. So that in and of itself is... And, and Hinoka is just extremely unique. So um, not to say that Sakura isn't also unique, but uh, legendary Grima and Veronica are 
I mean, they're units that we keep seeing over and over again, so they're not really that exciting. We've had lots and lots of opportunities to get them. Uh, Gunthro, we ha kind of haven't seen in a hot minute. Uh, Yune is, is relatively new. And then you have uh, Hinoka, again, that, that's pretty unique. So if I, again, if I had to rank them, probably blue and red at the top together, maybe green under that, and then uh, shortly, you know, very close behind that might be colorless. If Again, if uh, just in terms of, you know, what colors you may want to be going for on this legendary hero banner. Uh, me personally, I am at an orb deficit. I have been burning through orbs like nobody's business and it's uh it's not good it's not looking good there's lots of stuff on the horizon that i really want to save up for there is the second summer banner that is going to be revealed in just a couple of weeks so bear that in mind if you are interested in seasonals uh, and you're interested in summer and swimsuits then you may want to hold off on pulling on this banner um, of course there's also going to be uh, choose your legends again is not that far away uh, it'll be here before you know it and we all want to have our orb counts ready so let me know in the comments below if you're excited for legendary Ellie Wood Blazing Knight uh, finally getting his own legendary version in the game. If you're going to be pulling for him or if you're going to be pulling for somebody else on this banner, let me know in the comments below. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching the video uh, and trailer together for the first time. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching, taking some time out of your day to spend with us. We really, really, really appreciate it. And until next time, let's protect those skies.